Well, thank you, and thank you all for being here today. Uh, we started out talking about all the things we have in common, and uh, certainly higher education, serving the people of West Virginia, uh, and the higher education realm is uh, what holds us together, and how important it is that we all work together, especially WVU and Marshall, uh, on behalf of the state and on behalf of the people of the state. And one of the things that I shared with uh, Dr. Gee is uh, a three-dimensional printed object that uh, Gordon has the matched set, the other one. And this is a, uh, a symbol of the solidarity between Marshall and WVU going forward and how critical it is that we work together in the future and on behalf of the best interests of all concerned. So uh, that's the long and short of it, Gordon. You can well, uh, in order to put these together, it's sort of like- Charlotte you know, Weber. It's sort of uh, like Raiders of the Lost Ark, remember, when you put these together? Then the, the, then, the, uh, then the treasury comes forward, isn't that right? That's right. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, well, I, I, absolutely. I, you know, the experience of having been president of West Virginia University some 30, 35 years ago, uh, Dr. Kopp and I talked about it, and that was the fact that in those days, it was very much uh, competition. Um, I, I characterize it as hand-to-hand, hand-to-hand uh, hand -hand, uh, 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 work in terms of, uh, of, of combat, and that was not necessarily what we needed to do. I, the higher education has changed dramatically over the last uh, 30, 35 years. We can no longer afford to be in competition. We have to be in collaboration. We have to be colleagues. I think particularly in states that have enormous economic challenges, they also have enormous economic realities and opportunities. And um, the one thing that uh, we talked a lot about was the fact that we both agree that we're blessed to be in West Virginia at this time because we think our universities have the singular responsibility to make certain that, um, that, uh, uh, that our institutions are an investment, investment by the people of the state and our institutions, but more importantly, that we're an investment in the future of West Virginia. These two institutions alone are the, are the most important uh, economic, social, and cultural institutions in this state, and our intent is to make certain that we do make a difference by, by working very close together. And, uh, and he and I have already talked about the fact that we may tour, tour the state a bit together and uh, fly flags and uh, do crazy things. No mud wrestling. We're not going to do any of that. <laughs> <laughs> He's too damn big. <laughs> and the other aspect is that the competition will only be on the playing surfaces, not between us. Uh, we've got a lot of work ahead of us. There's a lot of problems to be solved. And uh, we're both committed to working together to solve them. And uh, I'm very excited about uh, the prospects of touring with uh, President Gee and uh, bringing to the uh, people of West Virginia the critical issues that lie ahead. Um, opportunities abound as do challenges and uh, the world and time of trying to solve them all by ourselves individually or has long since passed. That's going to require the collective effort and commitment of all of us working together to uh, solve what needs to be solved to make uh, uh, the potential of this state and uh, uh, the various parts of this state come together on behalf of everyone and advantaging everyone and creating the kind of future that we'd all like to see uh, manifest here in, in West Virginia. Um, I found it interesting in some of the comments that uh, President Gee is uh, reported to have made about walling off the state in terms of uh, keeping our graduates here in the state. While I'm not sure we can wall off the state, what we can do is create the kind of opportunities here in West Virginia that's going to keep people in the state, uh, especially people who are uh, better educated because this is where they want to be. We already know, uh, in talking to our graduates year in and year out, they want to stay in West Virginia. This is home. And uh, part of our responsibility is to uh, amplify the opportunities that are available to people here in the state to make them want to stay here and afford to stay here and want to come back home. That's all part of the equation. And uh, I know, I feel very strongly working together, we're going to be able to solve that, that challenge. I, you know, one of the things I get asked this question a, a lot, what has struck me by uh, re my return to West Virginia, I think a couple of things strike me. First of all, um, it's a remarkably warm and welcoming state. Uh, I, I joke about the fact that I'm a born again, actually I'm a born again, born again a West Virginian, having now moved back twice. Uh, but um, the other thing is the fact that West Virginians love West Virginia. And wherever they find themselves, they want to be here. Right. And uh, so our responsibility, it seems to me like, 
is for us to work very hard to do do two things. And he was alluding to the fact that I said we're going to build a we're going to build a fence around West Virginia, keep all of our talent here, and then we're going to have a couple of couple of uh, a couple of gates, and we'll let people come in, and then we'll close it behind them, because <laughs> be, be, because because the truth of the matter is is that we have moved from a hardware to a, to a thoughtware uh, society. And the economy is dependent on that. And it doesn't mean to say that coal is not going to be important or continue to be enormously important, or that uh, uh, that oil and gas and energy are not going to be important. But but in order to be able to compete in the world, we've got to outthink in order to to outperform. And so we are in the thinking business, and we produce people who then will create the economic uh, vitality that exists. If you think about if you think about it this way. Uh, take a look at the growing sectors in this country. Uh, almost all of them, whether it be Apple or, uh, or whether it be Facebook, a variety of these, uh, these issues, almost all of those underpinnings were invented in universities like ours. And so uh, we then provide the opportunity for those creative uh, activities to be turned into jobs. And that's what we have to do here. I agree. And, and I feel very strongly about it. West Virginians want to. Uh, have that uh, very same opportunity goes on the east and west coast, and it's a lot more fun place to live. I agree. I agree. As I used to tell Governor Manchin when he was governor, uh, we got here as quickly as we could. <laughs> I like that. I remember that. I'll steal that one from you. <laughs> Marshall staying turned uh, upside down. I'll do something like that. Right? So, any questions we can yes. answer? Any questions? Yeah. What's the number one problem? And if you guys both agree, <clears throat> what is the number one problem? facing higher education today? Sustainable funding. Well, you know, I, um, I, I I think that if we take a look at the uh, at the issues, I think that the the fundamental question facing higher education in this country, and it doesn't matter whether it's here or in, in Ohio where I served or Colorado where I served or any other place, uh, I, I think the issue confronting us today is how do we increase quality and how do we moderate or decrease costs? Um, and, and, and by that I mean, uh, we, we, in order to be competitive in the world with 1.3 billion Chinese, 1.2 billion Indians, and we're not in competition, but we are, there's a, there's a mass issue, we really do need to, uh, to create an environment in which, we, which quality is the, is the coin of our realm. But at the same time, parents are squeezed, there's a $17 trillion budget deficit in this nation, there's a $1.3 trillion deficit in terms of student loans, uh, and that's kind of like a, another bubble, a housing crisis. Uh, states have no money, uh, and so therefore uh, we're going to have to rethink the nature of higher education in order to make certain that we improve quality, but that we moderate costs. And, and the, the squeeze on the middle class, I think, is real. It is real. And having been president of a couple <coughs> of private institutions, and he has been very involved in private education, uh, the private institutions in some ways have, uh, have priced themselves out of the market, a number of them, and, and some institutions, a couple that I've served, uh, are, um, are don't think about the issue of the cost quality relationship. We as public universities have to have that as, a, as paramount. So yes, money is an issue, but it's an issue about how we manage those resources in a more productive and, and proactive way. Governor, did you talk about the importance of coming here today and what you hope to get out of it? Well, uh, the importance for me is the fact that I think that uh, I, I think that this university belongs to uh, the people of this state. I think this university belongs to the people of this state. I think that they should have an expectation that the only competition we have are maybe for three and a half hours on a Saturday afternoon or in a basketball game, and that's good healthy competition. But the rest of the time that we are absolutely committed to partnerships and uh, and and the opportunity for for Dr. Kopp and I to talk about it. We had actually talked about it in the halls of the legislature, but uh, I think it was important for, for us to have that conversation. Uh, I wanted to see the campus. Huntington uh, is, is a very central uh, city in this state, one of the most important, obviously, and this institution plays such an enormous role uh, in, in, in what we can think about for the future of the state. So it was a great opportunity for me. I, uh, this is part of also, I, I, there are 55 counties in the state, and because of the fact that our university is the land-grant institution, we have faculty, extension faculty in every, in, in every community in this, uh, in this state, and, it, and so my intent is to be in all 55 counties by, by the first to the middle of August in order to visit with, with those who are making a difference on behalf of our university and the people of the state. I certainly applaud Gordon for going to every single county, and uh, uh, there's nothing like seeing things firsthand uh, to 
begin to uh, uh, essentially seed the thought process in terms of the opportunities where we have chances to really work together, to collaborate together, to uh, mobilize both resources at uh, WVU and at Marshall uh, for the benefit of the people of the state. And uh, if you don't, if you aren't that familiar with what's happening uh, in uh, Huntington or Marshall, um, and your recollection is a long time ago, uh, you're not dealing with what's really currently here. And, and so I had an opportunity to show uh, uh, President Gee around uh, a lot of the facilities that are here today weren't here when he was president last at WVU. And uh, so it gives him a better appreciation of what we can bring to the table and how we can work together. Yeah, one of the things I've discovered, uh, many things that he and I had a conversation about is Steve is a visual guy. Uh, he's very concerned about the aesthetics, the quality of life issues, which I think is just very commendable. And, and I'm sort of a visual person too, and so if you can see something, it's much better to look at it and to understand it than right. if you read about it in a book. And I think that one of the challenges that both of us face is the fact that the university presence can be very isolated very quickly. I joke about the fact that, you know, I have a great office and have a parking space and I live in subsidized public housing. I really don't experience the university or the state the way that other people do. And so therefore, I think it's incumbent on us to spend some time um, Viewing the institution and viewing the viewing the challenges and the opportunities through other people's eyes, and so that's one of the reasons I think both of us really believe it's important to get out and outside of our uh, outside of our bubble, so to speak. One of the first conversations Gordon and I had, we were talking about um, opportunities for collaboration and uh, some of the uh, events of the past. And uh, Gordon's question to me was, uh, was my uh, person holding my office, the person you were interacting with, and I said, no. He said, that's the problem. Uh, he and I both realized that uh, if universities are going to be able to work together successfully and collaborate and partner, it has to be at the highest level. And uh, one of the promises he and I both made is that we will work together, we will talk together, we will confer together, uh, and those responsibilities are not going to be delegated to anyone else. And with that, we're going to sign the Suez Accord, right? Yes. Now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Any other questions? Other questions. What are some ways that you guys, uh, I, I know it's early on, but what are some ways that you guys are planning for the two schools to actually work together? What, what are some real tangible ideas? Well, I, I, Steve can speak, but I, I'll rush into that. I think that one of the first things we're going to do is, is, is doing exactly what we're right now doing which is which is to publicly talk about the importance of higher education in the state and to show that we are shoulder to shoulder in terms of the uh, of the commitment that both of our institutions have and higher education has to improving the quality of life here and to carry that message uh, collectively and individually uh, and then obviously their programmatic cooperation. I mean they, they've got this wonderful biomedical uh, biomedical research facility they're moving into biomedical or, or bio, bio, uh, medical engineering a variety of other things in which uh, we have great strength in the state and need to strengthen, so there's opportunities for collaboration there. Um, uh, certainly also uh, just in terms of, of, of student programming, in terms of uh, collaboration across our undergraduate areas, we're both uh, very engaged in international opportunities, and I think that that is another area of uh, significance for West Virginia because the world comes to West Virginia through our institutions, so we need to carry, to, uh, carry a common goal and a common, uh, a common story in that regard. I think the greatest challenge we have, and uh, it's been an ongoing challenge, we need to have a unified message as to what the case uh, for support of public higher education is uh, here in the state. And it's not just taxpayer support, it's, it's why support public higher education. Why is it important for the future of the state? We hear a lot of people uh, referring to how important it is to improve the ed educational attainment level of West Virginians. And as a general rule, it's widely recognize that that's imperative for the future of the state, for the future of the economy of the state, the future for economic development of the state. But until that resonates in all of the uh, little white houses around the state, uh, it's a message that's more ethereal than, than practical and operationalized. We need, to, we need to carry that message all over the state. And in so doing, it's not just making the case for Marshall or WVU or both of us, it's making the case for why higher education and pursuing higher education is so vitally important to our future, our collective future. 
Um, there are many opportunities as I look at what is happening at West Virginia University, what's happening at Marshall University, where we can work together on some things. And uh, we'll find where those opportunities are. I would hazard to suggest that by the time the next legislative session comes around, you're going to find us working very closely together on some initiatives with the legislature. Uh, and I uh, would hope that uh, when WVU and Marshall come together and talk in a unified voice about what's important, uh, that we're going to get a lot of response from uh, folks in the legislature and the governor's office. So what's the meeting with West Virginia? <coughs> Well, I, I mean, again, let me just say that um, the notion of us carrying a message of, of vitality and opportunity is very important. But I think that uh, I think we really do need to have a very serious discussion in the state about how we, uh, where our investment priorities are. Higher education, everyone love everyone loves our institution. Oh, yeah. I can tell you this. Absolutely. There's no doubt about it. There's a love affair that goes on in West Virginia with our universities. The problem is, is the fact that there are so many other priorities that, that, that you know, when it comes down to the prioritization, uh, the Medicaid, Medicare, the issues of, uh, the, the issues that confront public education, a variety of other things. And we, we do need to make the case that in order to be able to be successful for the future, that we need to invest, uh, and, and invest in priorities and that higher education needs to be at the very top of that uh, priority, given the economic circumstances of today in this nation. I would agree. Do you think this is something that other university presidents will eventually be brought into? Oh, I, we, we're not in the club of two, I can tell you that much. <laughs> Even though we, we love each other and uh, we'll do the bear, bear hugs afterwards, I, you know, this is, this, is about higher, this is about higher education. Uh, it's about all of our colleagues and certainly um, we're blessed to be presidents of these two really fine institutions, but we have great colleagues at Concord and at uh, Fairmont State and around around the state and in, in the private sector. Um, the issue of collective action is extremely important for us. We can't uh, we can't be a cabal of two. We've got to be a collaboration of many. Absolutely, every one of them is important. Every one of them has a a role to fill, a mission to fulfill in the, in the state higher education framework. And uh, the challenge, of course, and I think if you look at not just here in West Virginia, but elsewhere, um, competition between institutions has done more harm to public higher education across the nation than anything else I can think of. And uh, if uh, and when we begin to speak with one voice and a unified message as to what is of paramount importance in fulfilling uh, the opportunities that are there for the people of our state and people of the region and na nation, uh, then we're going to have something that we can all celebrate and champion. Until we get there, uh, it's going to be a struggle. One more question, if any. Uh, Dr. Kopp does have something to do. Oh, it's wrapped in green, too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, where's that blue and gold paper? I want to. If you're really ecumenical, I want to see that. Okay. Don't be sweet, sir. Oh, but, but I want. Design this plate for you. Now this. this I, is, I want everyone to see. There this, is a bow tie here. That that is a that's made on a three-dimensional printer. Yeah. Thought you might like that. Now yeah. this is handmade by. Uh, Oops, excuse me. I want to see this. Colby Sweet. Mm -hmm. And that and that's to serve your uh, flying WV cookies. There you are, yeah. That, oh my gosh, it says go herd on the back. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Thank you very much. You're very welcome. <laughs> you get the first cookie, my friend. <laughs> well, thank you, everyone. Well, thank you all. We're honored to be here. Thank you. Thank you.